everybody. Welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. What's up? We're not much. What's going on? While it's still Hey Man, we should, you know, say Hey Man. Yeah. I mean, we might st still we're say st Hey Man. Well, we still say Hey Man just when we see each other. That's true. Hey Man. The Hey Man vernacular isn't going away, but the title still needs to. We have narrowed it down to a couple, uh, but starting in February, we would relaunch and have it all set. Guys, before we get into the fun, let me get into a little business. First of all, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. For the new listeners, the, new, the numbers keep growing. Uh, thank you for leaving reviews. They mean so much to us. Uh, thank you. If you notice when you comment on that new YouTube video, until the next one comes up, I, I reply to every single one of you. Yep. Um, and so just know I'm reading them and I'm watching them. And, uh, and so thank you so much, uh, this week, when you listen to this, um, we are in Richmond, Virginia. Oh yeah. Uh, it's going to be cold. It is. Oh, guess what? Huh? Tomorrow. I don't know if anyone will be listening to this by tomorrow, which will be Thursday. We have a surprise show in Vegas Woo. at Kimmel's. Oh yeah. Friday, Saturday, Richmond, Virginia, funny bone. And then Sunday we are closing out the, um, Comedy Festival mm -hmm. in St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. We're at the Floridian. I want to tell you guys something. We just got booked for this like four days ago. Maybe not even. Yeah. So if you're in Tampa, St. Pete, if you're in that area, and I know we sell a ton of tickets when we come down there and go mm. to side splitters and stuff. This is last minute, but it's Sunday night. We got two shows Sunday night at the Floridian in downtown St. Pete. Oh, nice. Super cool venue. Super dope to be back down there. Hell yeah. If you saw us in, in St. Pete, we're going to be doing new material. Mm -hmm. So come through. It's a ton of fun. Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Just so you know, guys, we posted a clip last week or this week from the pod about, you know, throwing darts at each other in the basement. It, it blew the fuck up. Uh, animals. Yeah. Straight, so, straight zoo animals. Straight up animals, dude. When we were growing up, dude, we were not allowed to have feelings. Oh, oh, I, I, I can sense that. L let me tell you. Okay, you ready for this? Yeah. This, okay. I grew up in a generation where you, when something happened to you, you fell down, you got busted in the face, you fell off your skateboard, you whatever happened, mm. your dad was like, "You'll be all right." That was yeah. it. You'll be all right, and you'll be all right was code for don't be a pussy. Yeah. And you knew it didn't look good if your dad was like, we should get you to the doctor. Yeah. <sighs> because outside of that, it was it was a complete, you'll be all right. I grew up in a you'll be all right. You, nobody, that rub, is rub, not. Rub some dirt in it kind of generation. Dude, it was just like, you'll be all right. What are you fucking crying for? You'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. You're going to be all right. Yeah. And so that was the, right? We, we were not allowed to have feelings. Yeah. You guys, it was encouraged. Yeah. Well, the uh, sensitive is in. Being, being, or feeling the feelings is, is, is kind of trending right now. Yeah. Listen, I actually think it's okay to have feelings. And I think it's, that's a, I think we need to, again, I think we need to marry the two. We don't need to be the, in the, you be all right generation. Correct. But we also don't need to be, this is how I feel all the time. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck. I will also say we can't be in the, you'll be all right generation. Cause my generation is not strong enough for that. They, Nor is the generation under me strong no, enough for that. No, no. I don't mean that as a dig on anybody. No, I just mean it, that as straight facts. Yeah, like, it, it's probably true. That's just two different generations of people. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, no, no. My, my generation and the generation under. For sure, the generation many, under couldn't handle no. it. If I could tell you how many times in my life growing up I heard, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Stop crying. You're going to be all right. Yeah, it was just like you You got to the point where you're like, yeah, dude, I guess I guess even if I'm not all right, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You used to tell me that too, because it wasn't like right away, you'll be all right. It was, hey, you okay? Like. You good? And I'll say, yeah, this hurts and whatnot. And you would go, okay. And then you would let me feel it for a second. You'd go, you'll be all right. Like you, you, I was still involved, oh, but it was still more like, I tried know, to marry the two. And I think you did a great job at it. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Because it, it taught me, honestly, like, obviously if something happens traumatic, take the day, take it two days, be sad, feel all the feelings. But after two days, max, you got to get back up. That's where we I'm gotta, at. We got to get back up and we got to get back into the world and we got to keep pushing forward and, and take the punch and move on. You know, that is a hundred percent where I'm at is in marrying the two. You need a day, maybe two, 
take to, to get your shit together and to feel your feels. But after two, nobody gives up. a fuck. Yep. Time to get up. And, and I am a firm believer. Look, and I, I say this, it, where I am now, it's easy for me to say this. Right. And I don't mean where I am career-wise or where I am mentally. now mentally. Yeah. It's easy for me to see this. But I truly believe, outside of some really drastic cases, yeah, it's up to you. It's up to you how you want to feel. Nobody can... When I hear somebody said, he made me mad, nah. Nobody makes you anything. That's your choice. Yeah, your reaction to whatever it's your they choice. did. Yeah. He made me sad. She made me sad. No, 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 no. You, that's your, that's your decision, mm -hmm. right? And if you're sad, how long you want to be sad? How long you want that thing that happened three days ago? Because you know what? In my brain, I have really, I saw this fucking, I forget what podcast I was listening to, where I heard somebody said, you know, they, they, there was a pub in Ireland mm -hmm. that had the sign, a sign that said free beer tomorrow. But the sign was always up because it was always tomorrow. And when you came in, it was today. But the free beer is tomorrow. But when you came in, no, the free beer is tomorrow. Wait, that hold on. They never took the sign down. That? Because it never was tomorrow, dude. It's always today. Whoa. And. Well, that just blew my fucking head up. Can I tell you something? That's crazy. When I heard that, and I know it was such a crazy, weird anecdote, anecdote or whatever, I was like, I am through worrying about tomorrow. Because it's never tomorrow. It's always today. Mm -hmm. And yesterday might as well have not existed. It's that, you know? Yeah. So why am I going to let something three days ago that in, in all like whatever. Yeah. Never happened. Yeah. It, or it happened, but who it's in the foof foof. Yeah. Today. Yeah. So am I going to let the foof foof ruin my today? And I've, I really, that mind shift, it took a lot of mushrooms. That mind shift changed. Remember what I tell you on the ride over here today? You said your energy and not just like. Not physical. Not energy. physical, but like mental and like your life energy is at a 10. Fucking at a straight up 10. Dude. We love that. At a straight up 10. That's dope. I, I, yo, I was in LA last night. I wanted to tell you this. Went to the comedy store. By the way, I did Jeremiah Watkins. His uh, stand up on the spot. Oh, where you went up and stand there with him, and you guys just kind of riff. Chat. Yeah, we riff. The I audience screams things out of us, and we. I did a spot, but man, I was at the fucking comedy store, and I saw. For uh, uh, Sebastian went up before me. What's his? Mascalco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? A, and I saw. So last night at the store, Sebastian, Nate Bargazzi, great, and Ari Shafir. Okay. Not to mention like Steph Tolov. Who we did her love her. Yo, dude, she makes me laugh so hard. She's so funny. I watched Kevin Nealon do stand up on the spot. Genius. But I was so last night, when I go down to the comedy store and these other places, it makes me so grateful. And I know how lucky I am to be in this community of comics. Mm -hmm. Nate, Ari, and Sebastian couldn't be more different. Yeah. If you just, if it was just Sebastian and Nate, like, dude, Sebastian and Ari, like, they're yeah. all like, but I was watching Sebastian because he went up before me. And he's a fucking master craftsman. And so is Nate. And by the way, and so is Ari. And I was just like, how fucking lucky am I hmm. to be in this community? How fucking dope is that? Yeah. How am I going to let, and I listed off a couple things in my head. How am I going to let these things bother me? This is my job. These are the people I get to hang out with. Mm -hmm. How fucking lucky am I? And you know what? Like, I will tell you something. Last five years ago, if I had watched Sebastian, I would have gotten in my head about a couple things. First of all, I'd have been like, I can't follow this guy. What am I doing? I can't fucking go up. I, I would have been, you know me, dude. I'd have been fucking. Yeah. Yeah. And it would have also eventually become a comparison thing. Like how, well, how come he gets to, how yeah. come he, right? All I could think of when I watched him was how lucky am I to be here? It's a great, it's a crazy mind shift. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it, it, your mind has got, well, I think it's also cause I mean, look, you've always liked yourself. Like everybody always like, obviously you like yourself, but this, this last year or so is when you've even said it. You've, 
truly come to really like who you are as a person and, and come to terms with like, this is who I am. And I, and I love that for myself. It's, it's such a crazy turn going from, going from self-hatred and self-sabotage of, am I good enough? Am I going to be able to compete with this? Should I still be doing this to a complete three, 180 degree turn of this is a super dope job. I'm super blessed. And guess what? I'm here because I'm good at what the fuck I do. Yeah. Like the fact, obviously, like you've been doing, not struggling, but going back and forth with your brain for a couple of years, probably since COVID, I would really say that's because we lived together again. So I started mm -hmm. to be able to observe you. That sounds weird. Well, I will say um, pre-COVID, I, and when you say you've always liked yourself, not true. Pre-COVID, you know, I did. And I didn't know this until I had some time to sit with myself. And I didn't know this until I got to Nashville and could really get into it. I did not like myself. There was no parts about yourself that you liked? I, the loud voice in my head that called myself a piece of shit. Took over. It was loud. It was loud. You're, you're the, why aren't you better? These people don't respect you. Uh, how come all these people are more successful than you? Your material is blah. Mm -hmm. It's easy. I anything I could think of. You can't push anything over the fucking finish line. Um, yo, dude, this the bad self talk was beating me down. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah, and and in those situations, because even pre COVID, like your accolades and your and if you look at like your credits, like your credits even pre COVID were outstanding. They were so good. But it's really hard sometimes, and I understand it, because that, that voice is loud, has been loud for me for the last year. It's getting better at the start of this year, but it's still a pretty apparent and loud voice. Yeah. But it's hard to see, it's hard to see what you have and what you've done because of that voice. And it's almost prohibiting you from, from seeing all the things you've already accomplished instead of, or, or like what you could accomplish potentially in the future. And it's making you focus just on the bad things in that moment and that part of time. And it's, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to push through. It's hard to get through for sure. It is. It's helped me to journal and write things down. I started, so I would start journaling, not, it, not so much of a diary. I would say journal. It yeah. was more like a, and then about five months ago, I was like, yo, because I had had like a, uh, and instead I decided, I wrote down in the journal, I was like, just write down what you have. And the first word I wrote down was family. Hmm. And the second word was health and then love. And then I wrote like five other words of things that I have. I have freedom. I have choice. Yep. I have some money. Yep. And those weren't even material things. No, no, no. And the money was the last thing I thought of. Right? Right, right. I wrote career and I, I just went through each one of them after I wrote them all down. There was like nine of them. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that I value in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I would think of the first word family. Well, fuck. Yeah, dude, I got a great family. Mm -hmm. Check health. I've had battles, but yo dude right now for my aunt 53, I'm in some of the best shape of my life. My brain is sharp. Fucking check mm -hmm. love in abundance. Fucking check. And I went down all these things, career, cha cha check, mm -hmm. peace, freedom, choice, check, check, check. And I looked at this page and I was like, oh, I live in abundance. This is the checklist that most people would want to have in their life. Yeah. And the first three, family, health, love, check, check, fucking check. Mm -hmm. And it's shifted everything with like, I will no longer think about what I don't have. Yeah. It's doing me no good. There are a lot of things I don't have. Yo, fucking Dave Grohl is Dave Grohl, mm -hmm. but he could write down shit he doesn't have. 100%. Right? And people would be like, you're fucking Dave Grohl, dude. So? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah the, 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 the dude from Lincoln Park. Chester. From the outside looking in. Fucking check, 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 check. You never know what's going on in somebody's head, right? Yep. Yep. But I would... I, in for real, dude, wrote those things down. I wrote everything down that I thought I, that I were as important to me. Mm -hmm. And I fucking checked them all off. Yeah. And I do that every day. That's good. 
every day I write down everything that that's important to me that day. And I'll tell you the top three is always family, health, love. Sometimes health and love switch spots, mm -hmm. but family is always right up top. And I always give that a fucking bink mm -hmm. because, you know, dude, that, this is what I have. Yeah. You know? And so it's really been a, it's, it's really important to focus on what you have and what you don't for sure. Um, I, I, I did that a little bit the other day. Um, for those of you who saw my post about my buddy Jackson and those who reached out or had left a good comment or left some love, I appreciate you guys more than you know. It really was. It was just one of those days, you know, where I just uh, mm -hmm. crowded my dreams, woke up thinking about him. Um, but, you know, it, I also want to say on that mental health aspect of somebody might look like they're super happy on the outside, but um, you never know what's going on inside. And on that note, again, I will also say, yo, after I posted that about Jack, I called all the boys. I called Evan, I called Riley, I called McKay, I called Bobby, I called anybody I could think of just to do a mental health check. Because it's really important for you, for everybody to check on their people. And I just want to give that shout. Again, thank you guys so much for the love. And I know Jack as well felt it. He was with me. He's still with me, uh, but he was with me all day that day. So I appreciate you guys. And on that note, go check on your people. Make sure they know what's going on. Make sure they know that you're there for them. It's important. Love you. Let me ask you a question, dude. Okay. Do you find yourself checking on other people more than you check on yourself? I find myself when I check on other people is when I check in on myself. Mm -hmm. So I find myself, but also when I, when I check in on people, of course, like they're checking in on me. I think subconsciously I'm calling people, of course, to check in on them, but also because maybe I have something I want to talk about mm -hmm. or like I want to get checked on. But the last couple of times it, it wasn't even that. It was just more like, just wanted to make sure everybody was good. Hadn't spoke to a couple people in a while. Just wanted to make sure the holidays were good and that everybody's in good health. And, you know, and then if you needed to talk about something that let's chat, that was all it was. It was just, you know, a, a, a welfare, a wellness check for, for all the homies, you know? Yeah. And I think it's important for everybody to do wellness checks. So check in on your boys, your girls, uh, it, your, your people, everybody just, just check in. It's, it's important. Yeah, I agree, dude. I agree. And I, and I, and, and by the way, man, I think that you are, a really good friend. You're a really good friend. Uh, and you are there for your people in a very ride or die way, in a way that I do not see a lot from your um, generation. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I don't know enough people in your generation. Yeah, I mean, for me, look, it was like uh, throughout my life, I've had people enter, I've had people leave, yes. I've had best friends come in and then two years later, it's like, I'm, I'm invisible. So for me, it's like when I find people that I can trust and that I feel comfortable around and that people that I, I like the vibe and I think they could run with the energy and the mentality that I have, I do my best to make sure that those people are okay. And I do my best to make sure that everybody in my life is, is, is set and is, is good mentally because, you know, just like we were talking about tomorrow, we don't got to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow's never promised. We don't know what the fuck's going to happen tomorrow. Dude. All, all I know is what's going on right now in this moment. And it's important for me to know that in this moment, my people are good. And that, and that for me is like, look, when you, when you gain my trust and we get, and we have that love and that connection, I'm, I'm there at the drop of a fucking hundred percent. Always have been, always will be. But then the minute I feel like I'm disrespected or that trust and that love has been broken, I draw a hard ass line. Well, you draw a hard line because you've had a lot of loss in relationships, whether it's friends or whatever. Yeah. It, it, yeah, and you've had a lot of what would be considered betrayal. Yeah. Can and I can I tell you something that was one of the most heartbreaking? Because I know how much you love, and I know how much you love your friends, and you're a sen dude. You know what? You're a sensitive kid. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're a sensitive guy. I love that about you, dude. I love that about you. I'm not afraid of my emotions. No, you are not. You did early grade school. It was probably fourth grade. What is it? What year was that when those dudes started just not hanging out with you? Fourth grade? Uh, Third grade? I think it was around fourth and fifth. Yeah, somewhere around there. You, oh, this was so heartbreaking. You, because up until that point, and even after, dude, your positivity and your excitement about life. Your mom and I used to talk about that all the time. Like, I wish I was as excited about life as Jacob Wolf. 
and your just straight up positive energy mm -hmm. was so amazing. And you loved your friends, man. Still do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you came home one day, dude. And there was a couple of, we're not going to mention them by name, but a couple of dudes that felt, it felt real kind of dirty how it went down, even wow. in fourth grade. I don't even remember how it went down. All I remember is that one day we were friends and one day we weren't. That's how it went down. Yeah. I don't even know. No, nobody even, ever told you. No one said anything. No, there was just, they were all in a big group and friends. And then one day those six kids just stopped. It yeah. was that. They and, all stayed friends. Yes. And they must have had some sort of conversation. About something. But you came home. And you. There was a little ding out of that light. Out yeah. of that. And you said to me, because we were walking home. You know, we used to walk. Yeah, yeah, walk up the hill, yeah. And you were like, hey, we were walking to house school, and you were like, oh, it was fine. And <laughs> this is, you said, how come they don't like me anymore? <sighs> that was so hard, dude. That was like, <sighs> because you, I didn't have any idea what to say. And he was like, you were like, did I do something wrong? Or how come they're not my friend? It was like, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to say to you because I didn't have anything to say and I didn't have an answer. And I know you hadn't changed, but I'll tell you something, dude. It was, it's hard seeing a spark leave your kid. There yeah. was part of you that never came back that day. Yeah, but I think... It was, it was a rough, it, and I had no answer. Yeah. And I couldn't say it was going to be all, it was, they're going to like you, or I couldn't, you, you're not going to. It's a fucking fourth grader. Yeah. There's no way to tell what a fourth grader's thinking. There's no way. I can't say, hey, hey you're going to have, you're going to find friends later. You're not going to. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to say. It was, it at, was at a. That, at that young, it's hard to find the right words that one, I'll understand, but two, also that will, will give me hope. There's because, no explaining it. Yeah, yeah. These were your boys. You were running with everybody, and then one day you were just alone at recess. Yep. I will say, though, that that part that left me, I think eventually that part came back, but in a different form. I think that part came back to me as an, I'm still, I'm still that guy. I'm positive. Yes. I love my people, and I love my friends, and it's do or die. Like it, it's, if I'm like, yo, we gotta, I got to travel somewhere. I need this person. I'll pay for your shit, but like, I need you to come with me. I got people who will go ten toes down, yep. no matter where across the globe. If I'm, if I, if I need it, I think for me that part of me came back to me as still, still positive, still have that light, still have that energy because it's important, but also to be cautious about who you give that emotion to. Yeah, because some people will take it for granted, or some people will just throw it away. So it taught me, I think, a little more to be cautious with my emotions and cautious of. Because, you know, I, I get attached to things pretty easily. Yeah. People, uh, games, uh, drinks, food, whatever. And I think, what? Yeah, I mean, you went from people to food. And weed. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know, I think it just, I think it just came back. That part of me came back, but with a life lesson. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I think, I'm not saying it was good that it happened, but I think it was important. Because it mm. helped me with how who I talked to and made friends with along the way. Well, there's no and, doubt that and, you, yeah, and also that if I felt something from somebody, to I would rather save my heart and my emotions and pull myself out of that situation before I get my heart broken again. Do you yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it came back with a valuable lesson, and I think it was. I think it's important. I'm not saying it's important to lose friends or learn heartbreak, but nice. hard hard life lessons. Impossible to go through life with no heartbreak. True. It, it's, you know. it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's important. I don't wish it upon anybody. Heartbreak is. Well, dude. Can't, can't describe it, but love everybody checking on your people. Sorry. D that was awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that conversation. I want to say one thing that happened to me this morning that kind of fucked me up and then let's, let's talk about it. Okay. What were you want to talk about? Dude, I'm, this dude, I see this dude who's my, who I think is my age. You know, you see yourself. Yeah. And you differently than other people see. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in my brain, when I see somebody who's 35, I'm like, oh, that, that, that dude's my age. 
right? When I see somebody who's 35, I'm like, we look the same. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that's in my brain. Okay. Which by the way, though, you're, you're not completely wrong because for 53 or 54, how old are you? Uh, I was born in 1969. You should know how old you are. Oh, wait, it's 2023. 2024. Oh, 2023. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 54. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Holy fuck. But for that's old as shit. Until you're telling me. <laughs> but for for 54, you you don't like people will see you and go, well, you're not 54. People yeah, can't, you're like 48. People, people can't even imagine that you have a kid. So like, I get that. Did that person the other day think we were brothers? Dude, most people think we're brothers unless they know who we are. I mean, can't they tell with a mustache that we're not brothers? Relax over there. Although my mustache is not great. It's I'm, not bushy. I don't have a bushy mustache. No, nah, it's uneven, though. I'll tell you that. Uneven? Yeah, you got like more hair growing over the lip on the left side than on the right. I do? Yeah. Your mom hates the hair that grows over the lip. Oh, I, I hate mine because I'm trying to eat. And, yeah. and every time I'll just be like, oh, there's a hair in my mouth. And then I'll be like, ow. And I'll just like try to pull it, but it's attached to my fucking face. Yeah. I hate it. I wouldn't pull any hair out of that mustache. Yeah, it won't grow back. That's right. Um, it barely so, grows anyways. <laughs> there'll be a big hole. You pull one hair out. People are going to be like, what happened? Um, this dude runs a, ahead of me and opens the door for me. And he was like, let me get the door for you, sir. Oh, no. Now, I had a backpack in a bag, but like. Maybe he was just trying to be nice because, like, you had stuff in your hands. Sir, I, let me get I, the door for you, sir. I, I, it's just a sign of respect. I, I serve people who are 30. Do you serve people who are 19, who are the same age? I say it, like, for fun. If they're, like, like at, a, at, at the merch table, if they're like, yo, can I grab this? I'm like, yes, sir. Like, that's not what I'm saying. It's not the same. Do but, you serve people who are your age? And that's my point. No. I thought this dude was my age. He wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was. But he, how old did he think I was? That he served me. And can I tell you what? Old it, enough. Can did I you, tell you did, you? did you color your beard in? I did immediately. <laughs> can I? <laughs> can I tell you what else it did made me do? It made me go up and take some thirst trap take pictures in the, in the mirror. Did I you go was take like, some shirtless photos to make yourself feel better? <laughs> you totally did. That is amazing. <laughs> but I will say, dude, when I was younger and in really good shape, I was never interested in taking shirtless pics or anything like that. Right. It's, it's crazy as I've gotten older and I'm like, this is only going to last for a little while. Longer. That's what it is though. It's like, you think you, that's you, what it is? Well, yeah. Cause when you're young, you're like, well, I I'm mean, a, as I get older at a certain age, it'll stop. But like, I could, if I wanted to, I could keep this going for yeah. a little bit. But once you hit a certain age, your body just is like, eh, you know, mm -hmm. and starts oh, to, I know. starts to give up a little more than you do. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think for you and your brain, you're like, I should probably enjoy this while I got it. I a hundred percent. As I've been so older, funny. I'm like, I'm taking another shirtless picture today. So funny. I, I took them. And then before I posted it, I called your mom. I'm like, eh, babe, this is what happened. You call me, sir. I'm, I took a shirtless picture. Can I post this? And she's like, no, don't post the shirtless picture because your feelings got hurt. I'm like, she's right. Well, I guys want to do that. She's right, though. She was right. She's right. I might post it later anyways, just for fun. But Yeah, I mean, I mean, you posted one a couple months ago. I think you have to wait. Your, your, uh, Why? Kim Kardashian posts hers all the time. Well, yeah, but it's like your yearly thing. Like you every, you like once a year. Why can't I be Kim Kardashian? Why can't I be Ken Kardashian? You don't want to be a Kardashian. No, I don't want to be a Kardashian. Never. I, I mean, I, 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 I might sell out for the money, but. Well, dude, the perfect Kardashian to be is the Rob Kardashian. Because I got the money, but now I don't have to. And he doesn't have to do the TV anymore. No, he doesn't. No, he just gets to count his money. I always said, like, the perfect job would be the drummer from Pearl Jam. I get to play in arenas. I get to play rock and fucking roll. Mm -hmm. I get all the perks of being in Pearl Jam. Yep. I make a great living. I'm living out my dreams, but I could also go shopping on a Sunday and no only one, no, a, the nerdiest the of the Pearl Jam nerds will know who the fuck I am. Or people who like drummers. Like if you're a drummer and you just know drummers, like that's it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's funny that you say that. I, I saw a post the other day. There's a, a international football star. His name is Kylian Mbappe. And he is... Yep. And he's Bop. younger than me. He's 25. Uh, at 19, he won a World Cup. He's like, he's he's on track to pretty much be the next slash Messi slash Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the next young superstar. And he posted in an interview, he said, uh, I would pay all the money in the world right now to be a normal person. 
And it's like people who are in our spot are like, really, would you give up your hundreds of millions of dollars? But then I think about it and I go, he can't go to the store by himself. Dude. He can't go watch. He can't go like go movie. He can't go see a movie. He can't go shopping. Like anytime he steps out of public or out in public, people are going to know who he is. I'm going to tell you something. I won't say who it is because I don't know if he wants me to say who it is. Yeah. But in Nashville, let's just say we were at May, we, top five biggest country artists now for sure, maybe ever. We're at his house and he said, you know what I've liked about this COVID thing? I said, what? He goes, I went to Target the other day because he had his mask on. <laughs> I love that. He goes, I haven't been to fucking Target in 20 years. He goes, I just, I go do the errands now. Yeah. It, because, and he goes, I just don't speak so people don't hear my voice. But yeah. I just have a mask on and I just go, I go out and do things. Yo, I saw this interview. Where did I see the clip? Whose clip? Whose clip? where somebody was talking to Michael Jackson and he said, Michael Jackson said to the guy, so do you, can, do you just go shopping sometimes? The guy was like, what? He was like, do you, you just get a cart and walk around and put things in it? Yeah. And the guy was like, yeah. And he was like, and nobody, nobody says anything to you. You just go shopping with a cart. But isn't that crazy? It's crazy to think about the things that we just do in our daily life that don't seem like, like special things are, are again, it's perspective. Dude. Like, it's, it's crazy to think that, 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 uh, Killian Mbappe, Michael Jackson, all these other people would kill the just go out in public and not know who I, not know, not have people know who they are. The, most people are fucking dreaming about owning a, like this property or touring the world or being a world famous pop star. And this dude just wants to go to Whole Foods. <laughs> It's and put little, some it's lettuce the, in the car. It's the little things, man. It's the little things. So you, know? you just walk around and you just have a cart and you just put things in it. Yeah. D didn't didn't MJ actually build a supermarket in his backyard so that he could go grocery shopping? I don't know that, but that seems like something somebody like that would do. A hundred percent. I mean, he had a carousel and a Ferris wheel in his backyard, so I mean, why but not? But that a was so he could lure kids. Uh, yeah, I understand. You don't build that. a fucking. You build a supermarket to lure in single moms. Yeah, yeah, you and you <laughs> <laughs> one once for children. Fucking minivans lined up. Yeah, and then the, they and the they women go shopping and they, and and they, they drop, drop the their kids. kids off. Shut the fuck up. That's so funny. I love how you and I had the same exact thought too. By the way, it's you're a, not building Disneyland in your property unless you want children there. And you don't want a lot of children at your property. I don't have to get into it. We don't need to go. Yeah. But I will say, um, so I um Thirst Trap not posted. That's good. But, uh, dude, I did, and then let's get into your topic. I did. I ended my deadlifts the other day mm -hmm. with an easy, this was the fourth or fifth set, four reps at 225. Nice. I think that's two, two plates yeah, on each yeah, side. Yeah. I think I can put three plates on each side. I think I can do 315. 315. Have, My, you, have you hit 300 yet? No, 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 no. I really just want to get used to holding the weight. Yeah. I haven't done anything over 225, but I know I can because my last set, and it was pretty easy. Yeah. But also, don't, don't, I mean, easy, yeah, but then you got to remember you're adding an, another 90 pounds on top of that. I'm going to do a 10 on each side on the way up. I'm not going to oh, oh, just throw. Of course not. I would hope you don't. But my goal is to be able to do twice my body weight. That's so if good. I could pop out a 330 pound deadlift, I would be fucking psyched. That sounds like a great goal. I, th my goal is 330 pound deadlift, and I would like to do three sets of 10 pull-ups. And then I'll figure out a different goal. My, my gym goal for this year is to, obviously to get back into shape and just kind of just get my ass back in the gym. But... I remember how excited I was when I hit 225 on squat. I remember that. And I think that's going to be my end goal for this year is to be able to put two plates back on a squat rack or back on a bar and squat at least one. Can I make a suggestion about your goal? Sure. I would first set a goal of how many times a week you want to be in the gym. Yeah, I understand that. Your, your goal is ahead of the first step. Of getting into the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand. Um, 
And, and I find, dude, for me, and this is, again, just for me and take it or leave it, writing it down, writing down a list, right? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, when you look at that list, if you haven't done anything, you're like, that feels terrible. Yeah. But every time you check something off, it feels great. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I've started trying to make more lists, but sometimes like things come up, I get sidetracked and I go back to look at that list and I go, well, I did, I did some of those. I'm with you. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's baby steps. It's progress. It's uh, let's, let's talk real quick about goals. You want to for 2024? Yeah. I, and then we'll get into the topic of that woman who in four days was in the car. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You, we don't want to talk about Nick Saban. Ooh, yeah. Let's do the goals first and then save it. Uh, what do you want? I have goals for my like personal life and then I have goals for work as well. Uh, well let's do both. That's up to you. Uh, for me, personal is just more like it's getting in the gym, getting my diet right, uh, cutting out soda, and uh, and just... <laughs> the top was not on this that I just shook. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, Sorry, Matt. And, uh, you know, just uh, focusing also a lot more on, on, on me as a person and my relationship with my girlfriend. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, for my for my work, I, honestly, I have more for this than I do my personal stuff. Um, I, I like, and when I say this, I mean like not get a Netflix special or not like, you know, get my own tour or something like that. But I make a name for myself. I, I, hmm. I have a name for myself, but also still a lot of times nowadays, the name that people know me by is Joshua Son. Mm-hmm. And this year, I really want to. I really want to put in a good effort to when I start writing more jokes and come up with a new 15 minutes that it's not focused on you and I, and I want it to be more focused on me. Me too. And of course, like our relationship is, is what we've built this brand on, but you know, of course we can only do that for so long. And I, I I want to, I want to make myself, uh, I want to make a name for myself. I definitely did a lot of that this year. Yes. And I think it was great. And the progress was awesome. But uh, this year I want to keep pushing on that. Uh, and, uh, you know, really just hone in on the craft. I want to do 15 minutes for stage. We're going to make this podcast go through the fucking roof. I agree. Um, and then I want to try and do two open mics a month to, uh, just still get used to performing in front of people who don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that's important because I did my very first one of those this past Friday, mm-hmm. uh, at a dispensary, which was awesome. Um, and it was it was, it felt like I was on stage again for the first time. Mm-hmm. I, it was, it was, I was nervous. It's different. I spoke so fast. I went through like what was supposed to be seven minutes of material in three and a half minutes. I was practically running on stage. It's different, dude. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think, but I think that for me is good because it, it still is like, Hey, so you still are funny. You're still good at this. Don't take this as a, a step back. Take it as a step forward. Those that joke could have been funnier. I just set it up wrong. It's just nothing's a loss. It's a lesson. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to go in more with that mentality and try and do that this year. So I'm going to try and do some more open mics, um, especially when I have to come up with a new 15 minutes, just for me to try it out. And uh, and you know that's 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 where I'm at for what's coming up this year. All right, I love that. I and I hadn't thought of that. I haven't written them down. But if I was going to say some personal goals. Uh, physically, it, it, specifically in the gym or those two, the three sets, 10 on pull up, which right. I think I'm, I should be able to handle and the three fifteen. but personally, I want to stay curious. That's my goal for 2024. I, at the end of 2023, I be, I reignited being curious. I'm going to tell you something right now, you know, whatever my relationship with, and I say relationship in quotations with Joe Rogan. Right. And, but I will tell you out. And as a comic, I can say, um, he's done things for comedy. That is, it's hard to quantify. I would say him, Chelsea Handler, Johnny Carson. It's hard to quantify. And right. Joe showed us comics that we don't need the Hollywood we can be autonomous and do this the way we want to do it on our own and make money as comics. Right. These are all amazing things that he showed our community. You know what? I think the most important thing he's done, I think he made a generation of young men curious. And I think curiosity has died a little bit 
uh, the fact that information is so readily available and happens so quickly. Yeah. But I think he made people curious about information. So I, I, I love that. And I want to, I'm excited to be curious. So I want to make sure in 2024, I stay curious. And I am really dedicating myself to the things that I know are good for me. And I, what that is, I know that journal in the morning is so good for me. I can't speak for everybody else, but I know when I do it every morning that I am in a, so much of a better place mm -hmm. writing all that stuff down. Right. I know that when I meditate in the morning, I'm in a better place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm going to make sure that I continue to do the things that I know are good for me. Professionally, I want the, whatever we end up calling this new podcast. Mm -hmm. My goal is it for, for it to be top 20 by the end of 2024. Okay. I want to sell out theaters mm -hmm. by the end of 2024. I, I, um, and those are the two main goals. I, I, I want to, I mean, I got a littler one. I want to end up selling the script that I wrote, but like the two big ones mm -hmm. are theaters and this podcast, because those are the things performing with you and doing this show with you that bring me the most joy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I want to continue to do that. I, I feel so lucky to, I, I said this to your mom, I feel so lucky to be able to spend this time with you at this time in our lives where we're both grown and, and, um, yeah, it's been really the best. It, last year was the best year of my career. We're going to top it this year. Yeah, I agree. We're going to top it. All right. Hit me with the, hit me well, with it. Well, well, which one? Because like I have that news clipping, but also <laughs> Nick Saban retiring. Yeah, but that, that, yeah, we'll we'll go off and I just want to say one thing on it. It's going to change the face of college football. Uh, Nick Saban leaving Alabama is going to change the face of college football because every year Nick Saban is number one in recruiting because that man is personable and he shows up to people's houses. He meets the family. He has a dinner. Without him recruiting, people are going to want to go different places. Well, it's also they know that people get drafted out of there. They have. They're going to go to the college football championship almost every year. Like, I would want to go there. But without Saban? Uh, no, not without Saban. That's what I'm saying. So it's, it's going to be, I'm really curious just to see how that affects this next season. That's a huge. It's huge. Yeah, I'm huge. stunned. I, the only reason, uh, what makes it, honestly, the only thing I think about after I hear that is he thinks his team's going to be bad next year. Because I can't, I mean, I could be wrong. They weren't up like, to his standards this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When 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 the hoodie finally leaves, dude, it's gonna be a change. All right, yeah. hit me, hit me with the uh... yo. Okay, so I saw this news clipping, and it's this is it's crazy to me because I thought about, I thought about it, but okay. Are you gonna be able to answer questions of mine? Do you have the news clipping up? Um, I can find, I can get it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Don't okay. say it like that. Uh, that's funny. Um, so here it is. Uh, a woman survived four nights in the California mountains after her car fell into a canyon. So what happened was she spent four nights trapped in her truck because it was mangled. She couldn't open doors. I bet you she was injured. And where her car was, you couldn't see from the road. So no one knew that she was down there for four she days. She had water in the truck, apparently? No. So what she did... She drank her own urine? Yeah. She was driving near Mount Baldy, and she, her pickup truck fell 250 feet Get into the Get the Amanda. fuck out of here. No, yo, no. that would have scared the fuck out of me going down 250 feet. Yeah, but I'd not, have been dead but, by the time we. But hit not there. driving, she fell like her car turned. That's what I'm saying, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, 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 if that happened, I'd have been like, yo, I don't got the will to go through this. Just, no, heart attack, heart attack on the way down. Take me, heart attack on the way down. But so there were the temperatures were pretty low, but she, of course, thank God, she had a little bit of shelter, but she had no cell service, so there was no way to, uh, no way to get help from anyone. She did have some supplies in her car, just like first aid and, and a little bit of food, but nothing nuts. The way that she survived, which helped her a lot, is she set up bowls in her truck to catch rainwater. And that's how she was able to survive those many days because she was able to get hydrated. She was found. Wait, she wasn't injured? I mean, she, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't say the extent of her injuries, in all honesty. If both doors were trapped? How, how, how okay. is that possible? Uh, her pickup she truck fell 250 feet onto the embankment, leaving her trapped with a broken ankle and freezing temperatures. 
Oh, so even if she had gotten out, where is she going? Yeah, are you climbing up the 250-foot hill with a broken ankle? Probably not. Are you staying in the truck to die? I mean, I would... I think what she did was smart. Because... Nah. I think what she did was smart. Nah. Because this is what happened. Four days later, a fisherman passed by and was going down the embankment to go look for a stream to fly fish. And he heard faint cries for help. He followed the faint cries and found her pickup truck, mangled and turned over. And he was the one who actually saved her and got her help because he was the only one who could, he could, okay. could do anything. Let's... And he, he even he said, I don't know how she survived it. I saw the steering wheel uh, was almost folded like a taco. Her head must have hit it. Like he was saying that when he spotted it, he was stunned that she was even away. So she had some food, but no water in the truck. Just a broken ankle. Crazy to fall 200 feet, 250 feet and only break your ankle. I mean, probably a concussion. Like he said, he saw the steering wheel folded, okay. so he might have, she might have like, that, you know. Let's put this out to our people. Because I think you and I disagree on this. You're staying in the truck? Absolutely. I, look, I will tell you something right now. After two days, I'm like, nobody's coming. I'm getting out of the fucking truck. And I'm finding a place before my phone runs out of batteries. I'm finding a place where I can get... What if she went up 15 feet and had reception? Uh, well, I mean, look, that's a very 100% possible. Was she trapped in the car? <sighs> Let me see. Because she had to poop and pee. She probably stuck... She probably had to get... There's no way both doors are wedged. I'd have broken out the windshield. Are you saying you would have stayed in the truck, dude? And this is why I'm going to tell you. Oh, oh, okay. Here's. There's no she, picture. She spent four nights trapped in her mango truck after she swerved to avoid hitting a deer. So she was swerving out of the way. Okay. Went over the side. Yeah. I don't know if you like this is this is the photo on the cover of it. And it just looks like that. So like her shit was like. Also on its side, so it's hard to... So how do you not get out? I'm sorry. Here's what I do, okay? I get out of the... And I'm no James Franco, dude. You know that? You know the... 127 hours? Oh, fuck you. I'm dying. I'm not cutting off my own arm. Who with... what? He had like a butter knife or some shit? Yeah, it was something really like... Yeah, yeah, really yeah, dull. Yeah. It, it, that first puncture would have been hard, but once you get to the bone... Uh, Dude, I, here's the thing. Like, if it was a butter knife, I just have to think about that because I've accidentally cut myself with a butter knife. And, How? Well, I like, like, just was trying to cut something that was too hard for the butter knife, and it slipped, and it just like that's the thing. In order to cut somebody with a butter knife, you need so much brute force. Yeah. That's why, like, when it happened, I was like, "Oh, that can hurt." Yeah, like, dude. It hurt a lot. So I like the butter knife. So this is what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm definitely not. If I'm trapped in a. I'm not I'm a wild animal. I'm not cutting off my ankle. And But if I can get out, I'll wait two days. I will fucking wait two days, but I'm not dying in my truck. Fuck you. No, I think for, nah. I think for me also, though, like, uh, it was freezing temperatures. So, like, the truck, the truck is her only source of, like, shelter, dude. So to keep her from freezing, to not show, because also my thing is, like, if I'm in the mountains, I'm thinking of wild animals. I'm thinking of mountain lions. If a mountain lion sees me limping, moving slowly in an open field, I'm getting stalked. I don't, I'm staying in that truck because it is my best chance of survival from the elements and survival from nature. If I haven't heard a bear or a cougar, um, and I don't mean a cougar like that lady that was cheering for you the other night at the show. Jesus. I mean the cougar that lives in the wild. If I'm at, if I don't see any of those, I am trying to get back up to the street. Yeah, but that's the part about a predator. Apex predators don't just show themselves. Like, those type of animals stalk you. My guy, you're not at least seeing if you can get 50 feet up the hill to reception and then crawl back to the truck? But who knows? Maybe it wasn't the fact that she was down the embankment. Maybe it was just in that part of driving through the mountains. Maybe. She didn't have service. But how are you going to know? You're going to wait. You're going to die in your truck. You're going to die in your truck. Here's my thing. I'm, if I'm picking a way to die, I would rather die by myself in my truck than get eaten by a cougar. Well, I agree with that. But I would rather die trying to live than die waiting for somebody to save me. I think I think also like I can be a hero, baby. I think situationally, obviously, it could be different. <laughs> like going in, like obviously when you're in that moment, your thoughts are different. Okay, let me ask you something. Sorry, I gotta I gotta blow That's my right. nose. I don't know what's happening. You're stranded, right, in the woods. You're injured. 
You have whatever. We got a bottle of water, a tiny little bit of food. But it's going to be a long haul trying to figure out. We don't know which way to go. We don't. In our family, who are you bringing with you? Not bringing with you. In our family, who do you hope? Who's the who's the person you hope is in the woods with you? Because we don't have a lot of. Oh, I know who I'm picking. I'm picking Jace. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I'm picking Jace, and then for one reason and one reason only, Jonathan Wolf. For this reason, his directional awareness yeah. is incredible. That dude, I remember I was driving when he used to live in Hollywood. Jonathan Wolf is his brother, my yeah. uncle, by yeah, the way. Yeah. When I used to go help him at his the storage unit and do all that, and I was driving over the hill, I'd be like, "Yo, there's a lot of traffic. Waze is telling me to do this," and he'd be like, "No, nah, no, nah, what street are you on?" I go, I'm here. He goes, what, what way are you facing? I go, dude, you can't ask me for directions. Yeah. I don't know. He goes, what do you see? I go this. He goes, okay, so you're heading north on this street. What you need to do is go here, take this left, take this right, continue going north. I go, John, don't tell me directions. I don't, I don't know what that is. He goes, yeah. okay, keep going straight, this turn, this turn, and you'll be here in 15 minutes less time. Dude has an, a map yeah. of Hollywood imprinted in his brain. It's so impressive, but he also knows directions. Yeah. He knows his... I'm not, not situational, but his directional awareness is incredible. I'll tell you something else about Jonathan Wolf. You're not going to get any complaints out of him. Nope. No matter how hard things get or whatever, he's not going to be a woe is me dude who's out there. That's not going to no, be he's, his. He's, he's a leader in a locker room guy, which is great. He's a quiet leader. Yeah. 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 I, I, he, yeah, shows, yeah. He, he leads by action, not words. Really. I, I'm surprised you didn't pick me. Are you though? <laughs> Are you though? What do you think would be my greatest strength in a survival situation? Keeping spirits up. <laughs> I think you'd keep it. I think that you'd keep is it. a fuck you. Yeah, you 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 know what you know what your you know what your greatest help is yeah. moral support. Mor- <laughs> that's it. Your your greatest help is moral support, and that's it. And maybe if I need help moving something, but even then, I don't even know if I can ask for that. Now, if I needed you to deadlift something that was 225 pounds, I would ask you to do that. I will tell you here, I agree with you. Here would be my bet. Anybody who gets stranded and you're looking for somebody with these skill sets. I think you're right. I think when you get stranded or you're in a tough situation, it's easy for morale to get down. Tensions are high. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, I'm not going to let that happen. We're, 100%. You, we're, we're, because it doesn't do you any good. Yeah. It actually... Hurts, hurts your ability to get out of there. Yeah. Hurts so, your ability to think too. So, so, so we're going to have to, but I'll tell you what, what, uh, what I'd be good at. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. I would be really good at building a shelter. Disagree. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because you've watched alone and you've seen people do it doesn't yeah, mean that's that what easy. I was thinking. I, I that's mean, like saying you played guitar here. Now you can play guitar like Slash. Yeah. Like oh, that is not that is not how that works, dude. I don't have any survival skills. Zero. You won't even sleep in a tent. I hate outside sleeping. That's that's outside that's my sleeping point. is for people who lived in the fucking eight hundreds. That's that's you. No, dude. <laughs> hey, outside guys. Anybody who outside sleeps, I'm so happy for you. But guess what? It was so bad. People were like, we need to make an inside. Yeah, we need. Yeah, that's I, I guess that's a good point. This is it. Yeah, People, yeah. They didn't make an inside, guys, because of daytime. They made an inside because of nighttime. And shelter and weather and nighttime. animals. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, animal yeah. nighttime. Yeah, yeah. Animal nighttime? Well, nighttime, when we were pre- when we were prey, you know, nighttime outside is bad news. I think so. Yeah. Wait, we were never really prey because we weren't around with dinosaurs. Well, but the men at that time were still kind of prey. Like there were no men around dinosaurs. Cavemen? Cavemen were, were after? after dinosaurs. Matt? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Matt? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but there was no men with dinosaurs. Yeah. Okay. I, so I don't know if we've ever been But even at that cavemen at that cavemen area, saber tooth tiger is still around with cavemen, Matt? Matt? No. Nope. Damn. But I bet you, yeah, there were, there had to have been some form of predator for humans in, in Google that. have met, has, have humans ever been, is that what we would Google? Have humans ever been prey? I don't know what the right Google is. Yeah. So I think you're thinking about food chain. Yeah. Like we've always been top of the food chain, but we're always prey when it comes to like, you know, 
like women can be prey, children can be prey. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 I am talking food chain, by the yeah. way. But so have we always, since we've been around, we've always been top of the food chain. And I would say for two reasons, uh, a thummies and brain. Free will. Okay, yeah. so this is what it says. This is how uh, it says. Uh, the there are predators. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. However, there are not only predators that will attack humans if given the chance. A wide variety of species have also been known to adopt humans as usual prey, including various bears, spotted and striped hyenas, and a komodo dragon. And that's yeah, that today. Up. Yes, but we are still, as far as food chain, above that. Well, we're still apex predators. Yeah, hundred percent. But those komodo dragons are no fucking yoke. Well, dude. you know, every time they bite, they release venom. What? So, okay, so when Komodo dragons actually bite, they they tend to eat their prey alive. They don't, like, they're not... Sorry, everybody. I don't know what's fucking happening. Uh, they eat their prey alive. They're like crocodiles. So they don't kill their prey before they eat them. They trap a prey, and every time they bite them, they release a toxin and a venom that slowly paralyzes their, that slowly paralyzes their prey. And then the prey just sits there alive and watches the Komodo dragon just eat it alive. That's fucked up. Super. That is fucked up. Is that true? 100%. I think spiders do that too. Uh, they, they don't, when they, they, right? I think they, and they, well, yeah, they then bite, they wrap them up. Bite, paralyze, wrap them up, suck the blood. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. And then praying mantis, uh, after they mate, the uh, female eats the man. Yeah. I, I kind of think that's badass. <laughs> um, all right, dude. Listen. Girl power. <laughs> This is... We got two two of the things we wanted to talk about today. This is, as always, my favorite hour of the week. Yeah, it was a good time. Guys, thank you so much for listening once again. Jacob and I tonight are going to go with Iman and Beth to... Sorry, not sorry. Which is supposedly the best ice cream you're ever going to put in your pie hole. They, uh, they use... Apparently, there's a legal limit of how much buttercream you can use in your ice cream, and they're at the very limit of that legal limit so we will report back next week yes, jacob we will. wolf scared the shit out of me in the hallway oh i can't so. wait to post it i have that video pretty funny he was coming out of the bathroom i almost made him have to use it twice did you did you hear me singing at the door oh yeah <sighs> i heard everything you, i was like oh he has zero idea this is coming listen you are starting a war you do not want to start you started a war 10 years ago about putting my shit online i'm only just getting started mm, i can't argue with that um all right talk us out Yo, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. We are, yo, now through June, every weekend on the road. We Pretty are much. somewhere near you in your city. So come see us, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. It's going to be a wild ass year. Only two weekends off until Memorial Day. Yeah. So come see us. Come have some fun. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, and as we said at the beginning and always at the end, thank you to everybody who comes in, tunes in, listens. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll always say, do something nice for somebody today. Tell someone you love them. Check in on your people. It's important. We love you guys. Hey, everybody. Fuck yeah. Can I just say one thing? Hey. I want to, and I, I, I say this again because this dude is a good dude, and I just want to mention it. Because um, he's running this business by himself. Um, and it's a, a the best. Dude, this is just best age brewing. I'm just gonna say, is great beer. It just happens to have no alcohol. Like I, I feel weird calling it a non-alcoholic beer because that it just tastes like good beer. Yeah, absolutely. It 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 just tastes like it uh, just tastes like good yeah. beer that happens to be non-alcoholic. So I would tell all you uh, people if you're like me and you're not drinking anymore. Um, or you want to taste beer, but you don't feel like getting buzzed or having any booze. Dude, this best day brewer is like, it's amazing. And you get to crack a beer open and do toast all the things you don't get to do as a sober dude. And so if you are into non-alcoholic beer, this is the fucking one for you. Best day brewing is amazing. Agreed. Agreed. We're not drinkers, but because I, I, for me, the way alcohol makes me feel, I just have, I've grown away from it. But Best Day Brewing, truthfully, it gives me that feeling of still being able to have a drink with friends or with you, but not lose control of my senses. I lose control.
And the other thing, I've started a little bit of this magic mind. What is it? You got to Google it. But if you, you can drink it pre-coffee, post-coffee, or no coffee, it sharpens up your brain, dude. Dude, I am alert as fuck with this stuff. Uh, all right. Alert. All right. But there you go. All right. Again, love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. New and old listeners. Tell somebody you love them. Do something good for someone today. Check in on your people. Later, everybody. I have an ADHD brain. I'm fidgety. That's just kind of the person I am. So I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds. Mm. And that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People are going to like that. Yeah, but I... I and then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion. And then I'll, I'll have the DJ play. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey man. Hey man. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy, or cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Cryptids and cryptoids. I don't think the Sasquatch is technically, oh no, technically a cryptid. You know what I'm talking about. I don't like, know what a cryptid is. So a cryptid is like a skinwalker, or a mothman, or the chupacabra, or legend. Mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So, for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? I'm in a shirt that says, let's summon demons. Um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah, that's And I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Winnie the Pooh, 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 Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Hey, man. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Hey, man.